Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Jackery recently released its first ever modular lithium iron phosphate solar generator, the 2000 Plus, and has just released a smaller, more portable version called the 1000 Plus with a large 2000 watt inverter. But is it any good? Let's find out. Hobo Tech. Inside the 1000 Plus is a 1264 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery rated at over 4000 cycles to 70% capacity. As for size and weight, the 1000 Plus is 14 by 10 by 11 inches and weighs around 33 pounds, making it 11 pounds heavier than the outgoing Explorer 1000 that has the 500 cycle battery. Now, this is that trade off you make between shorter cycle NMC batteries and longer life LFP lithium iron phosphate. There is no free lunch, uh, but it is great that Jackery now does give you a choice between the lower cycle, lighter weight, smaller Jackery 1000 and this new 1000 Plus, which has the built-in charger, a much bigger inverter, and it overall weighs more and is larger. But now you can make up your own mind and decide which one is for you. As for the design, the display is the same we've seen on the Jackery Pro lineup. It's a color LCD with input and output watts, time to charge and discharge, and it shows battery percentage with icon along with various warning icons. The inverter on the 1000 Plus sports a sweet 2000 watt pure sign inverter through three 20 amp outlets. This is a major upgrade from the Explorer 1000's anemic 1000 watt inverter. As for ways to charge, there are the typical three. First, of course, is via AC wall or generator, and it can top up in just under two hours. Again, the charger is built into the Jackery. All you need is this super bright orange cable that comes with it. You will never lose this cable. I mean, you can practically see it in the dark. Second is solar power via its dual MPPT 8 millimeter inputs that supports from 12 to 60 volts of solar up to 400 watts each for 800 watts total. Now using four of the 200 watt Jackery solar panels, it can charge the 1000 plus in about two hours. Finally, you can charge from a 12 or 24 volt vehicle and that would take about 12 and six hours respectively. And yes, you can double charge with one of these. If you buy a second one of these, you can actually use two cigarette lighter sockets and double the speed of your 12 volt charging, which is kind of fantastic. As for 12 volt output types, the 1000 plus offers a single cigarette lighter socket regulated at 13.2 volts. Just like its bigger brother, this unit sports a pair of 18 watt USB quick charge ports and a pair of 100 watt USB power delivery outputs. Note that the USB on this is output only. You cannot charge a Jackery with USB. As for other features, it does offer a UPS mode with less than 20 milliseconds switching, which they call EPS, stands for Emergency Power System, and it does support the new Jackery app for remote access via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Like its bigger brother, the 1000 Plus also offers battery expandability through what they call battery packs. No special technical terms there, just battery pack, I like it. You can hook up to three of these battery packs for a total of five kilowatt hours of power out of the 2000 watt inverter. However, unlike the flagship 2000 plus, you cannot parallel these units together for additional power or 240 volt operation. They will not hook up together. That feature just unfortunately isn't supported in the smaller model. Kind of wish it was. They'd be the only one on the market with something this small that could do 240 volts, but hey, Maybe next time. As for the warranty, Jackery does offer the standard three-year warranty, which is expandable for free to five years just by registering on their website. So please register, get the five years. And of course, we took the 1000 Plus here into my secret laboratory where we performed all kinds of crazy experiments, including, yes, of course, a double-fisted battery capacity test.
As for the results of the battery capacity test, the DC capacity test scored 1138 watt hours out of 1264 for a fantastic 90%. As for the AC battery capacity results, it scored 1100 out of 1264 for a very impressive 87%. And funny enough, these results almost exactly match the larger 2000 plus. Next is the phantom load test or parasitic drain test where we determine how much power gets wasted if you leave the AC inverter on or DC turned on for long periods of time. This information is useful if you plan to run small loads off the inverter or plan to run a 12 volt fridge. The AC inverter test runs for four hours and then the DC test runs for 12 hours. I then recharge the unit via DC through the solar port for the most accurate result and measure the watt hours to fully recharge until it shuts off. Now with the magic of math, we extrapolate how much power would be wasted by each over a 24 hour period. Now look, gonna be dealing with some real serious stuff today. You might have heard of it, it's called math. And without it, none of us would even exist. So. And here are the results of those tests. As for the DC consumption, it used 41 watt hours over 12 hours, or 3% of its battery capacity. And that extrapolates to 82 watt hours over 24 hours. It would take you about 15 days to kill the battery if you left the 12 volt on with nothing plugged in. As for AC consumption, the inverter used 181 watt hours over four hours or 14% of the battery or about 1,086 watt hours over a 24 hour period. So if you left the inverter on with nothing plugged in, it would totally kill the battery in just over one day. Now here's something fascinating. The 1000 plus wastes a lot more power at idle than the larger 2000 plus. This should be the opposite because the 2000 plus has a 3000 watt inverter and this has a 2000 watt inverter. The larger the inverter, usually the more power gets wasted. I also noticed that the display showed it only charged 6% of the battery when in fact it discharged 14% of the battery. This goes to show you, you can't always rely on these meters on the screen to be accurate. Now this isn't a Jackery specific issue. This occurs across all brands. The battery meter is really only a guesstimate of the charge left. And it does get more accurate if you fully discharge and fully recharge, which I did. So it should have actually had the correct percentage, but who knows? So I'm always asked how long is stuff gonna run on these products? So compensating for usable capacity, you can pause this chart I'm gonna put up here on the screen to see approximately how long common appliances will run on this specific unit. Pure sine wave check under load, 120 volts, 60 Hertz, perfect sine wave. Inverter capacity test. This Jackery has a 2000 watt inverter. Let's see how far we can push it. Okay, about 30 seconds. It can sustain 2500 watts. The next test is the sustained cooling or heat soak test where we push this as far as we can, as hard as we can for at least five minutes to make sure it doesn't do anything out of the ordinary like smoking, drinking, TPing your neighbor's house or wrecking the car. Okay, believe it or not, 2136 watts for five minutes. Now, I only noticed this once it was running for about three minutes and the fans finally kicked on. There is a faint smell of electrical grease. Now, this is a common thing with solar generators. Sometimes they put the goop on a little heavy on the soldering joints and stuff like that. So when it actually gets hot, sometimes they smell smoky or like electrically. I don't know how to describe it, but it's definitely electrical grease because I've smelled this plenty of times with other solar generators. This smell will go away. Once you use this product for a half dozen times or so on high settings where it's pulling a lot of power, that grease will burn off and you won't smell it anymore. So just let you know, it does have a smell when it's brand new. And now the fans are kicked on, let's go ahead and do a decibel test from a meter away. So 54, 55 decibels with the inverter running on maximum. But I do have to say it took a long time for those fans to kick on. I'm pushing it basically past its capacity and then the fans after three minutes finally kicked on. Before that it was virtually silent. Max charge rate test. We're gonna start with the big honking orange Jackery AC wall cable. You're never gonna lose this outside, that's for sure. Of course it gets plugged into the back. Inside the app, you can actually turn it on fast or quiet. I have this set on fast. Now, if you want to turn Wi-Fi on and off, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi turn on and off together. You, you basically just hold these two buttons at the same time, the USB and the AC. Now, it tells you 12 volt and AC in the book, which is wrong, because that would be these two buttons. Press those for a second together. You'll see 
Wi-Fi and Bluetooth icons blinking on screen. So you can see right there, they're blinking on the screen. That means we're ready for charging and we are charging at 1230 watts. Inside the app, you see have an option for fast or quiet. Let's switch it to quiet. So it lowers the charge rate to just under 400 watts. So you can do 400 watts or about 1200 watts. So what's it sound like when it's charging at maximum speed from a meter away? Around 53 decibels. Let's now switch it to quiet. So it is virtually silent on quiet charge mode. DC max rate check. This is where we go through the various voltages from 12 volts for a regular car to 18 volts for a solar panel, 24 volts for a high-end solar panel, and then maximum to see how fast can we charge this Jackery. Do note on the back, there are two MPPT controllers. They are separate. They support from 11 to 60 volts each. We're starting at 12 volts, 8 amps, which is typical, and pulling in 93 watts. Still pulling 8 amps, 132 watts. At 24 volts, 8 amps, it is pulling 177 watts. Now the MPPT controller maximum on this is 400 watts per side, so you can put 800 watts maximum solar into the Jackery. Now at 48 volts, we're still pulling 8 amps at 375 watts. It looks like we're going to make it all the way up to the 60 volt max to push it to 400, so that's what we got right there. Do note at the maximum solar charge rate, no fans or anything of the like kick on. It is virtually silent. What about simultaneous charging? Can you charge it from both AC and DC at the same time? I am charging it from my fake solar array at 60 volts. Let's plug in the AC power adapter. Oh, for some strange reason, it's actually charging slower than it would without the solar. Turn the solar off. All right, I've let it charge for several minutes. I don't know what's going on. I'm assuming that the battery is too hot to do a full charge rate. It's limiting itself to 1,067 watts instead of the typical 1,200 something. It is warm. I haven't beaten the crap out of it, so I'm guessing that's why it's only doing 1,000 watts. So anyway, that's 1,000 watts from the wall. Let's see what happens if I do simulated solar at its maximum rate of 60 volts. The input number hasn't changed. So what this is doing is it's pulling less from the wall and more from solar, so it's a solar priority system. Jackery does offer a UPS mode, which means during a power outage, if the Jackery is plugged into the wall, your computer system plugging into the inverter should continue to run. Now this is an old laptop, 15, 18 years old, something like that, no battery inside, okay? So as soon as I pull the power on it, it's gonna shut off. So what we're gonna do here is hit the button, that actually will shut the power off to the Jackery from the wall, and we'll see, does the laptop continue to run? Place your bets, three, two, one. Looks like the Jackery has a sufficient UPS mode in this to keep a laptop enabled. The Jackery 1000 Plus is sufficient to keep your computer running in a blackout. Jackery does offer a regulated 13.2 volt output on their DC. Let's go ahead and see how many amps it supports. Looks like it outputs 10 amps, no problem, still holds 12 and a half volts. The 1000 Plus has a pair of 100 watt power delivery outputs, now they're output only. Can they work 100 watts simultaneously? You can see right here, it's doing 200 watts output. That's 100 watts each for each power bend. Musician's favorite amp interference test. This is where we determine, is the Jackery inverter clean enough to run a power amp? So if you're running a PA system, want to rock out in your band, use for ham radio, is the inverter clean enough? Let's find out. Three, two, one. It sounds pretty clean to me. The Jackery 1000 Plus is, in fact, suited for amplifier use. Here's the moment you've all been waiting for. You've been staring at this battery up here for half the video. Let's go ahead and plug it in. It uses the standard cable, which, unfortunately, no one's still doing 90 degree cables on this. They should have 90 degrees on these so this cable doesn't have to stick out. But in any case, let's plug it in. It locks pretty easily. Just make sure you don't knock over people in the next room with that. The interesting thing about Jackery is that if you have an external battery hooked up to it, it doesn't recalculate down here. So this power station is currently set to 74%. This battery is set to 100%. So it doesn't, well watch, I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna unhook this, turn this back on, you'll see it says 74%. Now I noticed this in the other Jackery Plus models as well. It doesn't actually recalculate when you hook a battery up to it. So you have to do the math in your head I got 74% there and 100% there. 
no idea how many hours you have left to run because it doesn't calculate that. So as you can see, it says 74%. So let's turn it back off. You're not supposed to hook this up with the power on. So hook it back up. And if you want the screen to stand for more than a few seconds, just double tap the power button. It'll, it'll keep it on for a lot longer. So it says at 2160 watts, it's 74%. This is going to run for one hour. Now, it doesn't seem to factor that in at all. And I'm going to prove that to you because watch, it says one hour. Let's unplug it. Unplug the top battery. It still says one hour remaining. So it doesn't matter if the battery pack's hooked up or not. The main Jackery does not calculate this battery up here whatsoever. It's only calculating what's internal to the Jackery main unit itself. So keep that in mind. Also note, there are no additional inputs or outputs on the Jackery battery. You basically just have these two battery ports on the back and that's it. And you got a handle. There's no wireless charging pad. No 12 volt output, no USB, no nothing. It's just a battery pack and nothing more. So I'm curious, does it pull from both batteries simultaneously or does it just pull from this until this is empty and then this? So I'm gonna go ahead and run this 2000 watt load until this number changes. So hopefully I'm not gonna be here all night because I got stuff to do. Fortunately, that didn't take long. We already got it counted down to 99% on the battery pack and 68% on the main units. There it goes, it just went down to 98%. So it does pull simultaneously equally from both units. That's at least some good news for the battery pack setup. Now for Jackery, this app is pretty much brand new. For the Plus system, you can see right there, it actually shows 873 watts coming in. You scroll down, you can get uh, light options. This is where you can actually turn the screen off two minutes or two hours, depending on how you want the timeout to be. And it shows you down there a battery pack. This is where you can change fast or quiet charging mode. Battery saving mode will just will only allow you to use the middle part of the battery. It, it won't let you charge it all the way or discharge it all the way. You have an energy saving mode, which will turn the unit off after so many minutes. Uh, same thing with auto off time. And then, of course, you can firmware upgrade down there at the bottom. All right, well, there's one more feature that I can show you, and that is, of course, the light. So is it going to have the SOS feature to call down our little buddies upstairs? Let's find out. So one press, it's a dim light. Two press, it's a brighter light. And is the third press our special little feature? You bet your butt it is. We're gonna call down our little buddies from upstairs. And no, I'm not gonna try to pick this thing up. This is definitely the most useful flashlight ever put on to a power station. Because this thing weighs like 40 pounds, you're definitely gonna use this flashlight uh, to look around your house or work on your car, because I mean, it's, it's so bright. Yeah, it's just blinding me. I just can't stand it. This is a Airplanes are gonna see this from miles away, so they should make you actually sign up for a license from the FAA before you use this, because you might actually cause airplanes to crash. Seriously, why did they bother putting a flashlight on something this heavy? So what do I think about the 1000 Plus? Well, it does perform across the board like you expect from a Jackery. It has the obvious ideas borrowed from other brands, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. We really hope that Jackery offers better battery expansion cables in the future with 90 degree bends instead of this stuff here. So if they would just put 90 degree bends here instead of this sticking out the back, we could actually push our Jackery's up against the wall and that would be fantastic. Just like all of Jackery's other recent releases, the inverter in this product is massive, powerful, quiet, and clean. The solar support is good and charging speeds have come a long way. We're all hoping that someday Jackery ditches the proprietary eight millimeter hookups and these silly little adapters. But it hasn't happened yet, and we keep hoping while the smart Hobotechers continue to buy adapters from hobotech.tv slash Amazon under solar adapters so they can use their own less expensive third-party solar panels. Now, the biggest surprise to me, of course, was that this model wasted more power to idle than the larger 2000 Plus. And I can't explain the reasoning behind it, but the difference is substantial. The larger model wastes 800 watt hours over 24 hours, this weighs 1,086 watt hours, or more than a kilowatt, over the same 24 hour period. Now this is only gonna affect those of you that leave the AC inverter turned on for long periods of time with a small load in it, like a laptop charger or something small. 
Obviously, if you're running larger appliances and you're using up the battery quickly, it's not going to affect you whatsoever. I just want you to be aware of the vamping on your battery life. So what's my final thought about Jackery's first mid-range LFP modular battery power station? It's solid, easy to use, has the features that most of you want, even if it has bulked up in size and weight. I mean, it's certainly a step up in price from the old model, but you're getting a lot more too. It's still not perfect, but then again, nothing ever is. Product price, the Explorer 1000 Plus retails for $16.99, but there is a promo code available in the description of this video that will nab you a substantial discount. I'm certain it's only gonna be good for a limited time. It's also good for their solar generator bundles that include additional battery packs and or solar panels. As for recommended solar, I recommend you just go with the 2000 watt Jackery solar panels because for one, they're proprietary and using non-Jackery panels can be done by painfully using sets of 8mm to MC4 adapters along with those supplied 8020 adapters. Jackery just designs their power station solar input around their current solar panel lineup and Jackery's just work best with Jackery panels. So if you're interested in the 1000 plus, the link and discount code is gonna be in the description of this video below. I'm also gonna put a link here at the bottom of the screen along with a QR code that you can scan on a mobile device that'll take you on over to the Jackery store page where you can check out the Solar Generator 1000 Plus. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. So if the 1000 Plus is still a little bit more than what you need, Jackery's also releasing this super cute Explorer 300 Plus. So check it out. It's small, super lightweight, and for the first time ever, it actually has its own built-in charger. So no actual external brick, you just use the typical cable that it comes with to charge it. So here's what's super cool about the 300 Plus. Not only does it have a 300 watt pure sign inverter, which will pretty much cover all the bases for charging a laptop, it has a 100 watt power delivery input and output. Yes, for the first time ever, Jackery offers a 100 watt power delivery input to charge one of their power stations. So you have two 100 watt ports, one of them's an in and out, you have a regular USB, you also have the 12 volt socket, of course, and a way to call down our little buddies from upstairs. This is the cutest little solar panel I've ever seen. Look at this thing. So this little 40 watt panel actually comes with it bundled in the same box. So it's this tiny little solar panel. It collapses up, it has little snaps. It's really neat. It's real small, very easy to hook up. And everything came in this one little box. So this one little box had both the power station and solar panel in it. Uh, they call this the 300 plus solar generator. So if you're interested in this instead, there will be a link in the description of this video. Tell me how many lights you see.